Hello, welcome to Spinnaker Summit 2022. Uh, this session is Spinnaker Success Stories. Today we have users from Cisco and Interswitch who are using Spinnaker at scale to provide CD as a service to thousands of applications. Today they will be sharing their use cases, best practices, and lessons learned. My name is Balaji Siva. I am VP of Product at OpsMX. I've been as part of the community for over five years, working with large um, companies uh, that are adopting Spinnaker uh, for various use cases. Uh, if you're not familiar with OpsMX, OpsMX is a provider of enterprise product, support, and services around Spinnaker. Spinnaker has been widely used by many companies, not only deployed to cloud targets like AWS, Azure, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and and GCP, but also to various Kubernetes targets as well. The main benefit of Spinnaker is the ability to, to create end-to-end -end pipeline or orchestration uh, workflows that allows people to go from all the way from core check-in to cloud deployment in a safe manner, including built-in canary and blue green type of deployments. The Spinnaker also is a very extensible product. You can extend it to add new integrations, new custom stages, so that you can deploy to any uh, type of uh, applications or use cases. For example, you can use it to deploy to uh, infrastructure using Terraform. You can use it to deploy to VMs, containers, functions, and anything and database updates, etc. with Spinnaker. And that is why it is quite popular among all these large companies as they look at various use cases and they want to have a, a unified platform to be able to provide that. So with that, uh, let me introduce the panel quickly and um, they, before they introduce themselves. So we have we have uh, three uh, panelists. Uh, so Asia and Abdul, both from InterSwitch. InterSwitch Group is, is a large uh, financial company based out of Nigeria, Africa. We also have Arun, who is in the US, is based, he's, uh, he's at Cisco. So I want each of the panelists to introduce themselves a little more. Uh, we'll start uh, around the table with Asia first. Um, Asia, I work as a DevOps engineer at InterSwitch Group. So InterSwitch is a payment is a payments provider in Nigeria. It's one of the largest payments providers in Nigeria. So just so I guess Abdul you can go next. Yes, so I'm Abdul and I work together with Asia. I'm also a DevOps engineer at InterSwitch. Um and we work together on the same team. Awesome, thank you. Arun? Uh, first of all, thank you for the invite, Balaji. It's been a pleasure to be part of the panel discussion along with Abdul and Asya. Uh, my name is Arun uh, and I'm senior leader driving the whole DevOps strategy for Cisco IT. Um, apart from the DevOps portfolio, I also drive the test automation for many of the key programs for Cisco. Uh, since all my customers are developers, uh, I really obsess about the whole developer experience. Uh, the goal of my team is to basically provide frictionless, fast, fun CI/CD experience for over 8,000 odd Cisco developers. Awesome. Yeah, I know. I think uh, um, I've been working with Cisco uh, with many of your team, including yourself, for the last four or five years. And same with- uh, You have been a past Cisconian as well, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's true. And, and Abdul also for multiple years at this point. So um, I know you guys are uh, great um, users of Spinnaker, and I'm really excited to have you guys on the panel. And let's get started. Let's talk about um, maybe we'll start with you, Arun, uh, on um, on the what is the usage of where, where are you with in Cisco in in terms of Spinnaker? I know you guys use for a lot, for a while now, but uh, maybe give you a little bit of a um, you know for the audience who are not familiar with Cisco's usage of you know, essentially the Spinnaker, where are you in terms of adoption? How, how, how big is it? Can you just share some details about it? Yeah, sure. Um, I believe we, we've been using Spinnaker for almost like four plus years now, if I'm not wrong. And it's definitely helped improve the overall deployment experience for Cisco developers. Uh, got about like six plus instance and that just keeps growing every year over year. Uh, that basically caters to all the runtime environments that is in both the private cloud as well as the public cloud. 
And this year, we've also been looking at the SaaS platforms as well. Uh, we have about like 300 odd applications that basically does the deployment using Spinnaker and close to about like a thousand odd softwares that basically leverages Spinnaker. Um, in a typical year, uh, we we have about like 300,000 deployments. That's basically across all the life cycles, dev stage and prod. And uh, this is just within Cisco IT realms. And uh, Spinnaker basically caters to maybe like 40% of those deployments. Very good. And and um, in terms of like, uh, in terms of pipelines or users, I know you, like what is the uh, sizing of it? Because I think it's pretty interesting the sizing is pretty large, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of like the scale you would use. Yeah, so currently, uh, I mean, like I said, right, we have like six different instances of it. Uh, and each of those instances basically got, uh, caters to a particular vertical like commerce, like sales, right? Uh, and then again, uh, we've been in this transition of basically moving from a legacy systems. Uh, so again, overall population is close to like 40% of it uh, is what basically goes to Spinnaker and we basically ramping up the Spinnaker adoption. Great, excellent. All right, now uh, I know that um, I have done uh, many um, Spinnaker sessions, summit sessions or Spinnaker live sessions with, uh, with another, uh, you know, your colleague. And if people want to know more about it, they can, they can listen to it as well in the past, past years. Now let's switch switch um, topic to InterSwitch. Uh, maybe Asya, you can go first and talk about um, your current status of Spinnaker at uh, InterSwitch. Okay, yeah. so we're getting to our second year or the end of our second year using Spinnaker. Um, so in terms of application size, we have around 400 applications for our development environment and all of that is being, we're deploying microservices to uh, Kubernetes clusters on the public cloud. Um, we also have another instance which deploys to production, which is on-prem. So that has around, I think, a bit over 150 applications deployed. Um, also, the pipelines are quite, we have a large number of pipelines. So recently we had to scale up our infrastructure sizing for UAT. So I think it's kind of um, a learning journey, trying to understand what, like what Spinaka, what we need to make Spinaka, uh, Spinaka adoption successful. Mm. Great. I mean, I, I did not know that uh, that many applications you guys are running. That's great. Mm -hmm. I did not know that, actually. Uh, uh, Abdul, do you want to add anything from your side on, on the current status at Spinnaker? And then maybe we'll get into use cases after that. Abdul, can you hear me? He seems to be frozen. Um, all right, let, let's move on. I think, maybe okay. uh, I think he's going to join back, I think. Um, okay. Yeah, so no. just to add some, I guess, extra um, details in uh, adoption, we've been able to use some features through um, OES, such as the policies and getting some pipeline execution data from the audit trail. So I know that our audit trail data, we've been gathering data since the since we started using Spinaka. So we're just trying to get more information from it so trying to get kind of like the deployment lead times and to understand what benefits Spinaka has brought to our organization got it and um, so i think uh, aisha let's stay on with you for a second because i want to maybe you, you talked about uh, deploying to kubernetes primarily is that and then deploy, do you have also uh deploying to uh, vms and other other uh, use cases Mm, not at the moment. I know mostly deployments to Kubernetes. Okay, so you're on AWS? Yeah. Or, okay, got it. Um, on Azure. Uh, okay, you're on Azure. So. Uh, so a cluster on Azure and then another one on Prem. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think in terms of, in terms of, um, is there any other use cases that you're using today? Or I guess maybe that you would, uh, that, that is besides just Kubernetes? Use cases in what sense for deployment? Targets or different types of applications. What are the different types of applications potentially? Just like uh, microservices deploying to Kubernetes. Yeah, so that's mostly it. Yeah. Okay, got it. 
let's let's yeah, yeah. let's talk about Arun. Arun, you have you have a little bit of variety of use cases, but maybe you can talk about um, some of your targets and um, what are different types of applications or what the use cases that you're using at Cisco today. Yeah, as you can imagine, like uh, like any large enterprises, uh, they have of, uh, operate in like different hybrid cloud environments. Uh, Cisco is no different. Uh, so we do our deployments in the private cloud, the public cloud, as well as, like I said, we just start out the whole SaaS environments as well. Uh, Spinnaker basically covers most of the uh, workloads that we basically deploy in the private cloud. Uh, such as OpenShift, uh, Kubernetes, uh, uh, MuleSoft, Informatica, um, WSG, and there's a new uh, data variance tool called uh, Data Build Tool that we just enable it for, and a few other uh, runtime environments that we support. Uh, in the public cloud, uh, this was a journey that we started like a couple of years back. Uh, we support many of the services that's on AWS and GCP. We haven't got to Azure yet. Uh, but in AWS, like EKS, Lambda, S3, and in Google, we uh, we support Google Cloud Run, GKE. Uh, and then uh, one of the SaaS platforms that we did some level of uh, enhancement is basically for Snowflakes. Uh, it was not directly into the Snowflakes environment, but we were maybe able to use the custom stage within um, Spinnaker to be able to deploy it into an artifact that can basically put it into Snowflakes. Got it. I know we did a, I did a session with Anil, right, um, on the Snowflake use case, right, where you essentially use a custom stage within uh, Spinnaker. I think this, your, your, what you just described is, is, is really, you know, where Spinnaker is available um, to extend beyond what's available out of the box, right? And that's something yeah. uh, that's been a great uh, use case for somebody like Cisco with so many different uh, groups uh, that want to do so many things. I think what I've seen, uh, you know, as the technology is evolving, right, from 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 primarily, you know, it was actually it was built for EC2, you know, Azure Netflix built it for EC2, but then yes, Google was able to add Kubernetes uh, to it, and obviously, as you are from InterSearch, you know, you you guys are using only for Kubernetes, which is great, right? Come on, but. Um, but what you have seen is you have lots and lots of use cases, and that's one of the reasons that actually is only only um, CD tool actually, to be honest, that I think in the industry right now that is really flexible like that, right? I mean, there's obviously Jenkins, you can sort of build your own things, but as well, but um, this is actually a pretty modern, fairly modern um, tool that's available for uh, a variety of use cases. Thank you for that. Uh, let's maybe, Abdul is back. I mean, Abdul, you want to add anything to, uh, can you hear us first of all? And and uh, you want to maybe add to, uh, to, you know, in terms of any use cases that you're currently, uh, use cases or some emerging use cases that you're thinking about uh, with uh, Spinnaker at uh, InterSwitch. Um, unmute yourself, maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, so because we're heavy on-prem, um... One use case that we've been that has been in the works and um isn't finally there, but at least we're making progress towards it is deploying to on-prem VMs and not Kubernetes. Um so the whole um how do you now take your traditional monolithic and legacy um deployment process and how do you use, um serialize them within a Spinnaker pipeline? So that's something that we're actually looking into and we're working towards. Got it. Um, and uh, do you have like non like VMs containers? Obviously, we have. Do you look at Spinnaker to like update databases or do infrastructure updates like Terraform or uh, anything like that? To, I guess there is Spinnaker can be used to do a lot of things, right? So. Uh, do you do you see any use cases that, that are emerging that you haven't looked at yet? Yeah, so um, part of what we're thinking around the VM deployments is um, starting all the way from the infrastructure provision in using Terraform and some maybe custom APIs, then going all the way to using some configuration management tools, whether it's Ansible or Chef, to actually um, updates the uh, um, the VMs and sets deploy the right type of applications. Um, so also when you add Popper to the mix, um, sorry Parker, when you add Parker to the mix, then it gives you a whole lot of possibilities. 
Got it. I mean, I think there's a, a yeah, so we have added uh, stages uh, that customer wanted, for example, like Terraform, for example, allow you to deploy uh, Terraform as part of your Spinnaker pipeline or something you can probably use or you may be using already. Great. Uh, Arun, um, let's switch to you and talk about um, any use cases that you haven't already, I mean, you you give a quite a list of things already. Anything else that you guys are still looking to explore with Spanker in for the next year or two? So one of those things that we've been really targeting is to basically have all the legacy deployments to replace with Spinnaker uh, when this is quality. Uh, so that's a big push that we basically continue to do in the current uh, fiscal year. Uh, we definitely plan to basically focus on the more cloud workloads, uh, the ones that we've not enabled so far, because it's quite a bit of people. I mean, there's quite a bit of Azure deployments happening within Cisco IT as well, but it's just that we never got a bandwidth to be able to get there. So we plan to do some of those. And SaaS platforms, right? SaaS is kind of where everybody's headed to off late. Uh, so it's quite a bit of Salesforce and Oracle Cloud related deployments that's actually coming in. So we're enabling Oracle integration clause as we speak. And then we're also looking into uh, Spinnaker to see if we can basically leverage Spinnaker to do Salesforce deployments. Uh, currently we actually make use of a tool called Copado, which basically is the CSE tool for uh, Salesforce. But we're basically venturing to that as well. Um, apart from this capabilities of Spinnaker, uh, we definitely want to venture in the whole blue green deployment. So that's one of those things that uh, as a platform team, we want to be able to make sure that we have high availability internally. The same thing goes for the application teams as well. So that's one feature we have never been able to get to, um, largely because of the size of things that we have to do within Cisco. So hopefully that's something that we'll be focusing the next uh, fiscal year. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Thank you for mentioning uh, that, that. Thank you for that. I think I mean I'm actually uh, impressed. You're know, looking at uh, like Salesforce update, etc. I, I need to I need to probably follow up with you on that on that um, for another day. Uh, I think that's pretty good because there's actually companies you know are or, or, or different like you said tools that are specifically for that, right? And and I think if you can leverage Spinnaker for that, you know, then then even more power to people using um, Spinnaker, it's great. Um, talking about the blue-green deployments you talked about, um, so today you're, you're, how do you do safe rollout in that case? Like, you know, do you, uh, how do you ensure that new releases is is, is, uh, is good in your Cisco today if you're not using blue-green? Yeah, so, so currently the, the, it's kind of a manual process where then basically they do a deployment to pull target instances and then basically have the GSP changes done to be, be able to point out to another infrastructure, right? So that's how we've been doing it, but we want to basically change it. And that's that's the reason why we want to basically uh, understand and basically work on that aspect of it. And every team does it differently. I mean, there's quite a bit of teams within Cisco, as you can imagine. So uh, everybody does it differently. Yeah, there's actually um, quite a bit of um, activity that I'm personally trying to kind of, uh, you know, create solutions for because there's a lot of customers doing different things. Progressive delivery, obviously, right? You want to, first of all, Canary, which is sort of obviously thing to do. And also progressive deliveries, which is, you know, you know kind of stepping through different, uh, you know, loads. And also something that I recently started looking into it is people are deploying to multiple regions or multiple clusters. Think of it as US East, US West, same same application, but you're you know deploying to different uh, servers in different regions or different countries or different whatever the you know the, the way you do it. And then now, how do you um, do progressive delivery of that? Maybe you deploy to a cluster, uh, a region, whatever. And if it all works fine, then you sort of okay, then roll out with the remaining cluster. You don't want to like spray everybody uh, at the same exactly. point. So there's a lot of variations of the sort of so-called progressive deliveries or safe deliveries. Um, Abdul, you had some uh, you had some ideas around how you are thinking of doing progressive delivery right now, or maybe in the future. So one thing we've done is to first of all roll out to a different namespace, and just to um, ensure and make sure that everything is good and fine, um, without really giving giving the bulk of production traffic. Um, once that seems fine, then we actually roll out to the, the actual production namespace where production traffic hits it. So that's the way we generally um, 
generally um take a stab at the production at the progressive or safe delivery. All right, and and, and uh, I want to go back to other use cases. Maybe Abdul, you 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 talked about or Asia is around using policies uh, as part of the pipeline. Um, uh, Abdul, I think you you had presented a talk in the last uh, CDCon or last Vinegar Summit or something around policies. How are you coming along in the policies space uh, around automatic automatic policy through OPA integration uh, within Spinnaker? Okay, so in terms of policies, we've been able to kind of limit or set some checks for our pipelines, both in development and production. So something as simple as checking the checking the name of the pipeline. So in case we put checks on development pipelines, we're able to um, evaluate all development pipelines on the, um, in the Spinaka instance. So something like making sure that security checks are made on applications before they are deployed to development um, environment or UAT, and also making sure that quality checks are done. Um, one thing that we're planning to roll out soon is, so what we've been using is static policies. Um, so one thing that we're planning to roll out soon is runtime policies. So making sure that existing pipelines also get checked and it's not just the new or updated pipelines that are checked. Got it. And, and by the way, do you use, uh... Uh, sort of the, some of the, you know, do, do you guys use like an automated approval? I think, I believe, uh, I'm not sure who I spoke to, Abdul or you, uh, automated yeah. approval using policy, is that something maybe you can comment on? Yes, yeah, so we we tested using um, policies for automated approvals. So we have a, so we have a Sonar Cube, like check or that we do on application code that we use, that we tested automated approvals on. and works really well and it's something that we're going to roll out very soon. Awesome. Yeah, I think, I think you know, if you look at the theme of what's going on, I think, right, Spinnaker obviously allows you to do anything you want and also yeah. provide your controls and, and everything else on it. Maybe, uh, Arun, you want to comment yeah. on, you guys are looking at any policy at Cisco? I mean, uh, I know that. Yeah, uh, we, we actually do today. So the thing is, as you can imagine, like the whole compliance is all policy based. All of those controls are baked into Spinnaker. Uh, we don't use OPA, but we do have a custom uh, application that basically does all the policy check for us. It's basically ZACML based implementation that we currently have. Uh, and we try to automate some of the uh, uh, approvals as well, like the peer review, right? We basically try to understand if this particular software is peer reviewed, we see take that and basically make sure that we don't have any kind of manual approval uh, for the stage deployments, but for production deployments, yes, we still have a manual stage in which they come into approval. Uh, but yeah, uh, like you said, right? Spinnaker is so flexible, uh, the ability to basically interact with APIs to be able to get the right information to do whatever that you want is actually working beautifully for us. So yes, we have, been using policies. Awesome. Uh, it's baked in day one. No, that's really great. Um, one thing that we have, I think it was Abdul actually who gave me the idea, uh, which was that uh, I think this is, I guess, what I see you talked about in Sonar Cube. I mean, one of the common use cases, if you look at the, the, the Spinnaker, if you have the manual judgment, which is just sort of like a ma manually, like, you know, you just click yes or no by, or whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. But then you know, but there are many times you need to check different tools, whatever. And, you know, some of the, some of the rules are pretty straightforward, meaning, you you know, you will not, uh, you know, release a bad release or bad code, or you will not, you know, approve something, you know, there's a very strict rules and, and essentially you can enable automated checks on that. And that's really what many people love the ability to do that. That's great. Now, um, I know I said, you talked earlier on um, auditing, uh, and how you do auditing of the Spinnaker, uh, et cetera. Can you talk more about me, you or Abdul, uh, around how auditing uh, of everything that's going on, how you guys do that uh, research? Okay, okay, Abdul, would you like to take this? Okay, um, so when it comes to auditing, it's um, basically a review of um, the pipeline executions and um, the rollouts basically that have happened. Um, al although that is not something that um, 
we have a separate we have a separate team that's responsible for like um review and auditing of um deployments um it's they have their own methods of doing it but we're trying to see how we can take in the data that we already have from the spinnaker and um ex um ex um, aggregate that across the different Spinnaker instances we have and present one single um, view for, especially for like the um, leadership to make some informed decisions on. Um, the whole data is in within Spinnaker, whether you're deploying to the pre-production environment or the post-production environment, it's just, you know, um, putting that together and aggregating it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I think uh, I think I see. I think you mentioned that we are using the OES or or our uh, auditing capabilities to look at those things. I mean, that's one of the things that's very powerful at Spinnaker mm -hmm. is the ability to audit everything that's going on. Right, everything is is stored, and you can actually then mine the data to look at what's happening. And that's really powerful for you know for security audit or compliance audit and those kind of audits. I think you guys work in a financial sector, so you have more potentially control. I don't any anything any comment on audit or other things you you you, you are using at Cisco? Or you're yeah, you so know? auditing auditing is very important for Cisco, right? So we have an integration point that basically splays all our events to Kronos. Uh, that's kind of our central auditing system. And then we actually do show a lot of insights based upon the data that we actually collect in Kronos as well. Okay. Great. All right guys, I think um, we are coming to the end of this talk. So um, is there, uh, maybe we can go with Arun first. Um, you know, maybe you can add one or two best practices uh, or one or two lessons learned, um, you know, since you've been running for like many years at Cisco, so there may be a lot of lessons and a lot of best practices, but maybe you can maybe crystallize one or two, set one or two for the audience. Yeah, sure thing. Um, one thing is we be, definitely make sure that all our configurations of Spinnaker are centralized. Uh, we actually make use of Conjure for basically showing all our secrets, so it's all centralized. So that's a best practice that I think might be a good thing for uh, everybody to do. Uh, plan for frequent updates uh, for each of the microservices part of the pipeline. Um, automation for upgrades uh, helps avoid all the human errors. So today we basically can spin up like a Spinnaker instance, it's just a minute, right? So we have all the automations done already to be able to do that. Uh, and then uh, test automation for all the upgrades uh, is something that's 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 key for us uh, that we are trying to basically work on, We've done quite a bit of progress and we're still making progress on that. Uh, with respect to uh, lessons learned, I mean, the custom stage option is like beautiful. So that's basically helps us basically support all kinds of uh, target environments. So we actually use that all the more. Uh, and then the optimized image, right, with fix for both cloud driver as well as fiat, right? Uh, the cloud driver part startup basically used to take 30 minutes, right? Now it's like three minutes or less than three minutes. Uh, and also the fiat service memory consumption has come down uh, uh, with the increase in like service accounts and pipelines it's gonna come down. So that's kind of uh, things that we actually did. Uh, and like I said, the whole automation is a beautiful thing. If we get, The more that we basically spend on automating it, the less work that you have to do. Got it. And I think we, we are open sourcing um, or close to open sourcing a uh, project called Storm Driver which is mm -hmm. basically, uh, it's basically, uh, it's a distributed cloud driver. So that allows you to scale the accounts uh, in uh, for Kubernetes or AWS or anything like that. So it is uh, basically sharding. Right? I mean, basically if you have one large cloud driver, you know, if you have to restart it or if, if it's a new account, new development mm -hmm. and slow. So what we've done is we have this centralized uh, storm driver concept and then you have the distributed cloud drivers each of the clusters or each of whatever you want to put it in. And then that essentially aggregates, you know, does this par partial data and then works with the central thing. And that's called Storm Driver. I think there's a session actually later today in the Spinnaker Summit um, by Michael Graff, who used to be at X Netflix. Uh, he created that. Um, you should check it out. And uh, we will be our open sourcing it. So you will, you will be able to use it. Or if you're already our customer, obviously we're going to get it. Uh, all right, so let's go to ICI. Do you have any best practices or, or, or uh, lessons learned from your side? Okay, I guess for, for me, like one lesson learned is just uh, making sure that the sizing of your 
Spinnaker Spinnaker instance can accommodate the amount of pipelines and applications you have and your the amount of pipelines you, you execute per day or at a time. So I feel that would you know help you to get the best out of the performance of Spinnaker. Um, Abdul, anything yeah. that you want to say? done, or maybe you can talk. Yeah, I think um, for, for me, the most important lessons learned have already been mentioned. Um, cloud driver, the charging of cloud driver, that has significantly changed um, changed how we use, um, how we're stable our Spinnaker um, it has been. And again, making sure you have a dedicated you have the dedicated resources in terms of whether it's a dedicated cluster or whatnot. Um, like as I mentioned, that's also significantly improves um, the stability and how well you, you your adoption of Spinnaker is. Um, also touching on something Aaron mentioned, um, custom stages. Um, we've basically used custom stages to unlock a lot of things. Um, I think we even have a talk later on in the um, in the um, Spinnaker summits that shows some of the use cases we've um, unlocked with custom stages that has really helped our and improved our adoption of um, Spinnaker. That's a good one. So I think you, yeah, you guys have a session later today um, talking about your custom stage or, or custom integration, which is great. I think you know people should uh, you know check it out as well. Uh, I think that's that's a good one. I think we have, for example, at Opsomex, we have done like seventy plus integration because everybody wanted something. <laughs> you know, Abdul, you wanted something, so we, we did some integrations, and, and and somebody else wanted something. Um, I think it's so easy to do it, right? It just takes for us a couple of days, and I'm sure like I don't and your team seems to be doing on your own. I mean, that's just really great, right? Essentially, um, you don't really need anything in that sense to um, you know really extend this. Um, by the way, thank you very much for all of you guys to be there. I know um, I see an update. It's late in the day for you, uh, you know, from where you're, where you're there. Um, thank you for thank you for all of you to join the join the thing, and hopefully the the audience uh, got something out of it. Um, we will share the contact information. I guess we can all find you on uh, uh, LinkedIn or or, uh, or Twitter, and hopefully we can reach out to you guys. Um, and if you have any questions about the session, um, we will be in the Q&A panel. So um, please feel free to ask any questions and we'll be answering the questions along the way. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the Spinnaker Summit. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Balaji. Thank you.